So uh, welcome to Just Ask Coach. I'm Don Amoroso, a sports savant who uses their platform to educate others about the game. And I'm Coach Keith, and welcome to Just Ask Coach. And today's guest is my main man, Anthony Nash. What's up, Nash? Nothing, nothing much. Just blessed. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, Nash is a former uh, wrestling alum and is currently uh, in grad school at Duke University, um, ma uh, majoring in physical therapy. So we wanted to have Nash uh, come on and talk about his experience as an uh, athlete and uh, student at Duke University. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a while, 2012. It has, man. It has, man. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It was different. I had a good time at Duke. Um, played football, had a pretty good Duke career, I would say. Um, had some highs and lows, um, but those highs and lows gave me an opportunity to, you know, pursue a dream in the NFL or just being a professional athlete in general. And yeah, man, it's a great time. It's a good place, a good journey. Happy where I'm at. Well, tell us how you got started in football in general. All right, yeah. So um, let's see, I started playing football. I played in middle school, <laughs> but that doesn't really, really count that because that's middle school. <laughs> <laughs> it counts, it counts. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'll say I play, started playing football my junior year of high school because of one of my bestest friends, uh, Marquise Roberson. Uh, you know, we had a little um, friendly little wager that I still wasn't going to take serious, but we made it. <laughs> he really wanted me to try out for football or play football. He said I could help the team out. I wasn't really about it, didn't care about it. Yeah. Um, I said, okay, well, I like watching you play basketball because you just give me a good laugh. made <laughs> bet <laughs> if I play football, he'll play basketball. Um, we made it. We had, they had tryouts in August of, I think, 2010. I didn't show up because uh -huh. I wasn't curious about it. <laughs> all I cared about was why would I waste my summer playing football on that hot turf? <laughs> why would I want to do that? And then I was hanging out with one of my buddies, Dom, and we were just hanging out and he was like, you know what, let's let's go try it out and see what it's doing. This is mid-August. <laughs> this is like three weeks in their camp. <laughs> and we show up, you know, we had, they gave us equipment and everything. I had the helmet with the split, uh -huh. <laughs> split face mask. <laughs> and I would say like, the rest is history, you know. Um, I had to work for it. Obviously, I didn't really know much about football, but the end and now I just know catch the ball. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, but my junior year, I had a pretty productive year, I would say. I was all state, um, just coming out, just having fun. And that's probably the biggest thing for me, my junior year, was just having fun. Mm -hmm. With football, I didn't take it serious in, in the sense of like, right. I needed this to get to, you know, to college or nothing. I wasn't really thinking about that because my focus was on basketball. Right. Um, but yeah, I had a pretty outstanding standing junior year and then I had a couple offers and some interest from D1 D1 schools um, specifically I had some looks at from around local schools um, Penn State it was Temple um, then it started getting more to the southern schools um, UNC looked at me that was a big one for me because that was a dream school growing up um, but then Coach St. Uh, Claire, we had a conversation. He said, you know what, I'm going to send you a tape to Duke. And I said, uh, why would I even want to email? <laughs> Try to do that. I hate Duke. Duke's stupid. <laughs> but I had a conversation with my family, and they said, why not? You should try it. And then I was a hard-headed kid. <laughs> I didn't want to, but they kind of made me, which I'm glad they did. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I had a great camp. At Duke, um, I ran a good 40, apparently. <laughs> I did, I think I performed the best I possibly could, um, which is a blessing. I see it as everything panned out now, why it happened. Um, I got a scholarship offer from them. And then that summer I, I committed to Duke University. Uh, senior year was, you know, just a normal senior year. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. Right. Um, you know, then everything's history. I had a, I had a good time in high school, just going through that whole process. You don't realize how much goes into it, the recruiting process, the ins and outs of it, researching academics, looking at program history, looking at trusting coaches in general. 
and what they have a plan for you, which is very tough. I mean, definitely when you're in high school and you're the top guy. Right. And you go to a college and everybody was the top guy. Um, so yeah, that's how that's how Duke happened. Um, yeah. So tell me, when or how was it important that you already had your academic uh, foundation uh, set already? Yeah, um, that was uh, probably the biggest thing. Definitely in high school, uh, we had to take the SAT or the ACT to be even eligible. Mm -hmm. But since, you know, school, definitely at Ruston, they pretty harper on you'd have to have good academics or you won't be able to play anyway. So just having a higher GPA allowed me some leeway to have, you know, if my SAT score wasn't the best, my GPA was good enough just to even solidify that. So that was a big thing, really big, because, I mean, just even getting to Duke, that's a high academic school. Absolutely. Very, very tough and difficult compared to other schools, which is, you know, it's a little different, it's a little easier to, you can have kind of whatever subpar grades and still get in, but just with the elite program that Duke is and the athletics and academics, having a higher GPA just allowed me to excel. And even, even when I got to Duke, they taught me so much of, I thought I was a smart kid, but wow, yeah. they, they taught me a lot, and I'm very grateful for that. I learned a lot from Duke. So, what was the deciding factor for you to go to Duke? Was it was it David Cutcliffe? Was it the campus environment at Duke? Was it the fact that their degree holds a ton of value? I mean, it's it's, it's a you know it's a very uh, attractive school for a lot of athletes, not just on the field but in the classroom. So, what what for you was the the deciding factor to go to Duke and be a Blue Devil? Um, definitely Coach Cutcliffe. He was a big factor. I trusted him. That's one thing. And another thing that my mom harbored is that you're not going to be a, you know, an athlete forever. So that's just setting me up for being whatever I wanted to be after, you know, whatever football is over or whatever it is that's over. I had that backup plan with having a Duke degree. So just, just those two factors were just huge. And then the, when I had my visit there, you know, I connected with a lot of people in that recruiting class. Um, and that just really solidified that, yeah, I want to be here. I had my, I guess the, my roommate for the recruiting class was uh, Thomas Sirk, and we became really good buddies. And, you know, just a connection I had with him. And, um, and he was a quarterback, so I knew that's somebody I'd be playing with, and he would be running the, the whole show. So that just gave me the confidence and the comfortability to, you know, say, yeah, I want to be a Duke Blue Devil. Um, it wasn't my first choice, but I fell in love after I, you know, let go of, you know, trying to have it my way. And I'm so glad I did because it opened so many doors. And, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, um, you know, kind of doing things your way. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people locally know you were also a really good basketball player in high school. And, um, you know, multi-sport athletes to an extent, you know, we, we can go back and forth all day, but, you know, to an extent they're kind of going the way of the dodo. What was... The, the biggest key for you, what, what did you see as an advantage of being a multi sport athlete? And then when you picked up football junior year, how did you keep that balance? I think, I think just from my perspective as somebody that was in middle school at the time watching you, you did a great job of that. And I see a lot of athletes now trying to somewhat do the same thing, but they haven't quite got it wrapped around them. Yeah, I mean, you just got to be open-minded for sure. Um, I mean, we even had a conversation, me and Coach Keith, about what – what do you want to do like beyond? What's going to set you up beyond what we're doing? I mean, I love basketball with all my heart. And we had this conversation multiple times. And, you know, we just had to, I just had to drop my ego, honestly, and just follow what the path was. I mean, I didn't have as many offers or even, I would say the caliber of offers for basketball that I did for football. And, um, and that's just like a salute to my friends, you know, just being honest with me and just being honest with myself. I mean, you just have to be open. If you're gonna play a sport and definitely multi-sports, you gotta go 100%, and you're not just gonna do it just to say, I'm gonna stay in shape for this sport coming up. So if you're gonna do it, you just gonna have to be the best of your ability. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it's tough to balance though, because a lot of people just wanna focus on one thing. <clears throat> and that's what I wanted to do. I mean, it took me two years to even get out of that rut. I mean, I just wanted to do basketball, 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 basketball. And when I started playing football, you know, I started getting more tough. I started getting a different mindset, which actually helped me in basketball. When I started doing track, it helped me with my conditioning. It helped me with my quickness, it helped me with my longevity. Um, and that helped me with basketball and football. 
So I definitely am I'm an advocate for playing multiple sports, but you have to be definitely bought in for, into those sports that you're doing. Wow, that's a great answer. And I know you mentioned some of your teammates at Duke. Uh, what are some of your teammates uh, doing at this point? Um, some of them are in the NFL, blessed, definitely a blessing. And some of them, a lot of them, they're in big name companies like Thomas Sirks and Paul Davis, and he's up there in the managing position with only being in there for a couple of years. Mm. Um, a lot of people went into finance and they're doing big things with that, with Goldman Sachs and et cetera. So they have a lot of opportunities. And I mean, sports set you up for that because you learn so much from sports. You learn how to work with people, people that people you don't like, people that you do like. You gain leadership qualities and how to lead certain people and just dropping yourself to be okay, letting other people shine. Um, yeah, you definitely have to be disciplined too. Um, you're on, you have to be on time. It's just you learn so many qualities and traits that help you in the real world. That's huge, super huge. Well, you mentioned your opportunity uh, to uh, try out for the NFL. What was that draft process like? And what advice would you give to any other players that's going through that process right now? Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> it was stressful, but it was super fun. I mean, you just training so much. You know, when you grow up, you know, you want to be a professional athlete. So if you even have the opportunity, I know I talked to some people after I even stopped playing, um, they weren't sure if they wanted to try out. And my question is just like, why not? Mm. I mean, if you have an opportunity, why would you set yourself up for the future to say, what if? Right. You right. know, have that resentment and, you know, beating yourself up just because you were scared of failing or even just trying. You know, you can always go to a job again. Even in my case, you can always go back to school, mm. but you'll never have an opportunity to chase a dream that you've always wanted. Um, the whole process was grueling. I mean, we started... Mm. When did I start? So after, I think our season, we ended in December because we didn't go to a bowl game. And I had broke my collarbone and we started training in January. Mm. And pro day was at the, I think mid-March or end of March around there. And it was just grueling, you know, you're up, you have to, you're eating a lot because you have to get a certain amount of weight. You're lifting pretty freaking hard. Um, because you just have, so you have to just prep your body. It's a different preparation than just college. You know, you have to, you know, look the part and you have to be able to perform at a certain type of level. Um, but it's definitely, it's, it's beneficial. You know, you never, I haven't personally worked so hard for a goal. And, you know, even though I didn't make the, you know, the final team, but like, I just wasn't disappointed because I know how much I put into it. And that's just the beauty of it all, in my opinion is that you can put so much dedication and so much work and at the end of the day, you know, like, okay, I, I did my best. And that's what like, uh, definitely the NFL and just that preparation showed me. Absolutely. And, and who were some of the NFL teams that showed some interest in you in, in the early stages, throughout your pro day, then through the draft process, all the way up to, uh, through the camps? Yeah, I mean, I had, I had a good handful. Um, when I was, um, let's see, when I started training, I only had like maybe a couple just because I had a pretty good agent, I would say, who actually, he put, he put a good effort into giving me some exposure. So the first team that I was interested to me, interested with was the Denver Broncos, the San Diego Chargers, New York Jets, the Giants, and Arizona Cardinals. Um, but after Pro Day, I think I had at least about 15 other teams, NFL teams, that were interested in me because I, I performed well in my pro day. I ran a good 40 and I jumped and I ran pretty good routes. But um, I think the reason why I picked Denver was just how interested they were from the beginning of the process. Um, they called me a lot every other day. They seemed interested in me. They invested in me. Definitely when they signed me for their signing bonus, I could tell they were interested and they had plans for me. So that's like, that was the biggest thing for me. It's like, if the team's interested in you, you'll know they're interested in you because they'll constantly contact you. And what would be some advice you would give to any, to any uh, prospect, you know, and, and obviously it's, it's a different day and age right now with the draft we just went through, not having the, you know, the in-person pro days and a lot of the in-person stuff. Um, but, you know, going forward, hopefully this all summer gets back to normal. What would be some advice you would give you, to some of these younger prospects that, you know, may not be, you know, a, a first or a second round guy, um, 
and they you know they don't necessarily get the results they want right away. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter when you're drafted. The only thing that matters when you're drafted is the money, <laughs> obviously. Um, but like when, if you get a chance or an opportunity, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a sixth, seventh round or undrafted. Like when you're on the field, it doesn't matter. Everybody has an opportunity, um, believe it or not. I mean, there's some political aspects to it, but you're going to have a chance. I mean, it's always like that. But if you're going to believe in yourself, legit believe in yourself and you know who you are as a player, I mean, just don't give up. If your dream is to play in the NFL and the NBA or whatever, nothing is stopping you. Literally nothing stopping you besides the thing that's in your head that's telling you no. And that's like the only, that's the, honestly the only thing I can give to people because I mean, I had that, I had that headspace in the early parts because I was like, oh, I broke my collarbone. You know, my, my stock is down. I don't think people cared about me. I don't even think people know it about me. I'm at Duke University. Like that's a small football school. It's not a, I'm not like I'm playing basketball or anything. That'd be a different story. But if you can play and you believe in yourself that you can play and you get out of that negative self-talk, then you can conquer whatever it is. I mean, we had plenty of people from Duke go to the NFL and perform. I mean, we got Daniel Jones, who was a, wasn't even a scholarship athlete at Duke until later in his freshman year when somebody tore, when somebody got injured. He had Jamison Crowder who was one of the best, I think, one of the best receivers in the NFL at this time. And, you know, he just had that mentality that I'm the best that I can be. And if you have that type of mentality, you can't go wrong and you won't lose. Wow, that's nice. Well, when did you decide to move on from the NFL and pursue uh, a master's uh, education at Duke? Yeah, so, um, let's see, my senior year, um, I applied to Duke because, or to PT school, because I just didn't know, you know. Um, my junior year, I started to play, I would say mid. I got that, I finally got that opportunity to, you know, be a starter. And like, I started to perform, but I wasn't sure if that was gonna be the, if I was gonna be able to have a chance in the NFL. So I just, I, I had my options. So I applied to PT school. You know, thank the Lord I got in. So I knew I had that backup plan just in case, but after my senior, I think a couple games into my senior year, um, definitely after the Notre Dame game, that's when I started getting buzz from people, you know, uh, agents started hitting me up, you can keep down the down low, but um, <laughs> that, that I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I have this chance, you know, I always have a plan B, because I got into school, but I really have to try this, I have to try this, and then, you know, when that whole process happened, you know, I went through preseason, got cut, and then I just, for three months, was just bouncing around, bouncing around every day, just going to a different state, different tryout, different this, that, and the third, and, you know, performing really well and still not getting that opportunity. It's, it's heartbreaking, it's tiring, it's disappointing. And at a certain point, you just gotta say, what am I doing with my life? Um, it's you know there's always a chase 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 but when you're putting so much effort into a chase and not getting the results you got to make a decision like okay i got i just gotta hang it up you know and i'm gonna put whatever i learned in sports and athletics and whatever your past experiences i'm gonna put this into a different field and the thing in the, the field with physical therapy is that if you still want to pursue sports you can still go into that right in a different role right and that's what the beauty of like the whole the whole journey is is like you learn so much from your past experiences and everything always works out regardless wow that's awesome um that you had that uh, thought process in mind and you had that plan b already set it was tough though believe me uh, i had multiple conversations with my mom my dad <laughs> you know they wanted me to keep playing and keep trying and i just i just i didn't have it anymore right i didn't have that that want to, you know, it was just, I felt like deep down, I was just wasn't going to have that same opportunity that I did in Denver. Right. Regardless. Well, it's nice to have that comfortability and that confidence in yourself to pursue uh, something else and attack it with the same uh, ferocious intensity uh, that you have. And um, what's some of your career aspirations uh, now that you're in uh, PT school? Oof, man. 
I'm, I'm not even sure. This when I got into PT school, I wanted and thought I wanted to do sports. They would be a sports physical therapist, but that changed. Um, I just I don't think I wanted to just go through that, open that door up again because I feel like I would have just been chasing what I've been chasing, mm -hmm. like that recognition or et cetera, famousness, whatever it is. Um, I had enough of traveling, and I I feel like sports physical therapists don't get the respect that they should deserve. And I feel like I just would have went through that whole that rabbit hole again and gone to that vicious circle. Um, thinking about home health, um, I would say my ultimate goal was for sure to own my own practice um, and have like a training facility slash rehab. Um, that would be my ultimate goal, just to help people. Um, you know, show them that you know, give them hope. That's the one thing I've learned with the physical therapy is that a lot of people just don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in their bodies. Um, they don't have that mentality. And it's just like that conditioning of somebody telling them, no, this always hurts and you're never going to get that in the third. And I feel like the position I can be in, I can change that in a lot of people. And that's what I think the beauty of physical therapy is. Well, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just looking to you now, you know, it's, it's really interesting how you how you put that into perspective. Um, you know, just being able to translate, you know, your, your mindset from you know, from the gridiron now to, you know, your master's degree in physical therapy. Um, in terms of, you know, the mental aspect, uh, what, how, how do you approach, you know, your, your, your academic studies, you know, which are now obviously, you know, at a much more intense level, um, you know, similar to how you did in, in football with, you know, film and, you know, everything we, we kind of see that, you know, football players go through in terms of the mental aspect of their preparation on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all the same stuff. Honestly, it's physically tolling. I mean, you have skills, right? Everything's skill and everything's art. So if you're not putting in, I guess, countless reps, countless studying, if you can like, say film study, then you're not going to get what you want to get. You're not going to get what, what you want out of it. You're not going to be as good as you want to be. It's all the same thing. You have to put in countless hours after the classroom. And that's so funny talking like in, in this kind of way with like academics. But it's, it's so true because you're just going to be average, you know? And nobody really wants to be average. So you have to stay after class. You have to meet with professors, AKA coaches, if you want to say, you know, get more insight. And then you can find mentors too to help you get on that track, just like in any other sport, you know? Somebody that can guide you and point you in the right direction. So it's, it's very, it's all very similar. School is studying a playbook, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, it's just different language. That's all it is. That's why it's not the transition. The hardest transition for me was just dropping that I'm not an athlete. That was the hardest thing to do because that's very depressing because that's what you do all your life. You're like, I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete, I'm an athlete. But you're really not. That's just like what, you know, conditioning is and what people put labels to you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all similar. It's all similar. Everybody can do what I do or did and even better. It's just how your mindset is. And then one question we, when Coach and I did our last interview, we, we uh, concluded this way. This is kind of a, t uh, a two or three part question. Um, in your case, it may be a two part. Who was the best uh, defensive back in your situation that you had to line up against at, in high school and in college? In high school? I know high school, that might, that, that not a lot of guys can cover you. So that, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little. Uh, not even, I can't even be cocky on that, but I don't know anybody in high school. <laughs> College, who, probably, who was the toughest one? Maybe Artie Burns, um, when he played at Miami, mm -hmm. he, was, okay. he was pretty good. And maybe Jair Alexander out of Louisville, he was he was pretty tough. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were pretty good, for sure. Those were yeah, those, those for sure. In the NFL, uh, Chris Harris Jr. Okay, okay. yeah. Hands down. <laughs> By far, I went up against him in a couple of practices, and he's he's the real deal for sure. And it's so beautiful in the NFL because people take it serious, practice is serious. It's like it's basically a game from right. the best right. to the rookies, and that's what's like amazing. That's competition's beautiful out there. Mm -hmm. um, and the people take care of you, and like that's how you get your respect. That's how I understand why people respect so many people because practice is a game. Right, right. You know? Well, Nas, this is uh, uh this is uh funny. This is kind of a personal question that I'm at ask uh from you uh being an alumni of rustin basketball 
Tell me one of the funniest stories that uh, happened with uh, Coach Keith. <laughs> oh, you know, man. I the story, Coach. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't cuss, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, there's, there's so many. There's so many. Probably, I'll say a practice one time. <laughs> one time, it was uh, I think it was my sophomore year. <laughs> no, it was my junior. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was my junior year, <laughs> and we weren't talking enough. <laughs> And in practice, we were, we still weren't talking. We were being quiet, and you got so mad. You just grabbed the ball, and you were saying, "You gotta talk. You gotta scream my name, Cordero, 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 Butch, 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 <laughs> Nash, Nash, Nash." I line up. Oh man, that was oh, a cool man. when we when we walked into the um when we had what was that gym? Because we had the main gym, it was the, the auxiliary gym or something yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> and we had the basketballs out. You said you don't need the basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> you can just put them back. <laughs> like, oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Well, Nash, man, we really enjoyed you, man. This was a, a very uh poignant interview, man. Very intellectual, man, very um uh, healing, man. Uh really enjoyed you. Thanks for coming on, uh, Just Ask Coach, man. Really appreciate you, man. Uh, I appreciate y'all. This was fun. That's a good right. time, for sure. Awesome. I, I could help somebody. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm sure you, you you will and you have. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I'll tag you when we get it posted. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right. Peace. Love you, man. Yeah, love Tell you the family. Too. Say hello. Oh, yeah. I will. I will. You too. Yep. <laughs>